Now that I have a nice uh, spectrum analyzer on my bench, I thought I'd pull out some old projects. Um, and this is a project that I never quite completed. Um, if you've uh, ever seen one of these, it is a 40 meter, 7 megahertz uh, transceiver and CW only. But uh, a lot of these little boards like this are like direct. But this one is actually a uh, uh, super heterodyne. So uh, I'll explain what that is in a minute. But just to, just to show you it's all together. Um, and it is transmitting now. I haven't tried out the receiver section yet. I haven't troubleshot sh that. But I do have the, uh, the transmitter working. So I have the, uh, the output connected to a dummy load and going into the uh, spectrum analyzer. And there's a, a key here. I'll put a jumper on it so I'm keying down the, keying down the transmitter. And there's an adjustment here that I'm going to twiddle. And so there is the... Uh, Sorry, I didn't put this into NTSC mode, so it's flickering. But um, uh, you can see that when I twiddle the knob, it tunes, right? So the uh, center is at 7.08 megahertz, and then I can tune that. I can tune that a little bit back and forth. So transmitter's working great. So this is the kit that I've put together. Uh, it's called the ME40 Plus, and. It is a SuperHet transceiver, like I said. Uh, it's fairly new, January 2018. And by Midway Electronics. So there's all the info if you want to uh, investigate this thing. So let's, uh, let's look through the manual here. This is what you get. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's a very, very, very done well, uh, done very well. How did, how did, uh, what tools you'll need, how to solder correctly, uh, how you wind toroids. Uh, we'll go over the schematic. There's a theory of operation, and then there's an actual uh, assembly procedure. Uh, and um, before the smoke test, do these things. Uh, did I do that? I don't, know, I don't know if I did that or not. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, it's got a parts list, and let's uh, let's talk talk about this thing. Let me let me briefly show the schematic, which is kind of confusing, and then I'll, I'll show you a block diagram that makes more sense. So uh, this is where the antenna connects. This is the final amplifier, single transistor, a class A. Here's the driver. Uh, there's a, a filter here, a mixer. There's three mixers. There are any 612 mixers. The cool thing about this board is there's only four components, uh, four, four ICs. Uh, mixer, 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 and op amp. And that's it. Everything else is discrete, which is really nice. Um, and so there's a transmit section here, and there's a receive section here. And this is a, a bit too complicated. You can probably download this um, and uh, take a look for yourself. But let's take a look at the block diagram, which I think is quite clever. We have a, a receive path. So this is the receive path. Okay. And so let me just block this bottom half for now. So the receive path is 7 megahertz comes in. It gets mixed with a 3 megahertz uh, local oscillator that's tunable. So uh, 7 minus 3 is 4. So the uh, IF frequency, the first conversion IF frequency, is a 4 megahertz bandpass. And then that goes into a, a second mixer, and it gets converted and is a 4 megahertz oscillator. So these mix down to 0. Uh, they, mix, they mix down to uh, you know 700 hertz or 800 hertz, whatever you want to have your CW tone at. Uh, so these are, these are only about 700 uh, hertz apart and then you get the audio out. So this is the uh, uh, op amp mixer mixer. So that's the uh, that's the receive side and the transmit side looks like this. Uh, there's the 3 megahertz tunable oscillator that gets mixed with a 4 megahertz LO and uh, now, now we're adding 3 plus 4 is 7. There's a bandpass that's 7 megahertz and then 7 megahertz goes out. Now what makes this quite clever is if you take a look at the uh, take a look at the PC board. Let's see here if I can move it over into camera. 
there's one, two, three, four, five crystals, but they're all four megahertz. And there's one, two, three, four things, but only three of them are exactly the same, any 612s, and then a, a generic op amp. So the cool, the really cool thing is that it's all based on four megahertz, four megahertz, four megahertz. So this one is for uh, one of the uh, uh, oscillators. So this one here, so this needs a four megahertz oscillator here. So that's one crystal. Here's another four megahertz oscillator. Okay, that's the second crystal. And then what do the other three crystals do? Well, that's that crystal lattice filter. Uh, I went over that in a, in a video, how to design crystal lat lattice filters. And so if you take a look at the uh, uh, schematic here, it is uh, crystal capacitor, crystal capacitor, crystal, and then capacitors on the input and output. So three crystals and four, four capacitors. So yeah, so you just need four matching crystals, and there are five all together. Some of them don't actually have to match. The the beat frequency oscillator doesn't really need to match. It can be a little bit off. Um, these three need to match. So if you go buy the crystals, then sort them and find your best three and put them here. Your best three need to be here, and then these other ones can, can be a bit different. And then everything else is, you know, hand wound. You get to wind your own toroids and stuff. You need to buy some correct core. It, it tells you all the parts listed. Uh, so you need to buy these uh, cores and do things. Um, these two uh, cans uh, are used for the seven megahertz IF. So instead of crystals, it uses these uh, um, transformers, uh, tunable cans. So you, 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 you peak these two for the seven megahertz. This uh, resistor here is the drive. How, how, how much drive do you send to the final transistor? And then uh, this is the, uh, os the three megahertz oscillator that you can adjust a little bit. It uses a, uh, a uh, Veractor um, <clears throat> tunable, tunable uh, capacitor, voltage, voltage variable capacitor. And then this is the volume knob. And uh, this connector here has the, ch the key, the CW key, and then audio out. So everything's there. Um, 12 to 15 volts. I think it's uh, good up to five amp, uh, five, uh, five watts, something like that. It's a really cool kit. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's quite complicated. It's not for, you know, it looks small and everything, but it's not for the first time kit builder. This is quite complicated. and. You're going to need some test equipment to actually make this thing work, too. You need to have really good component selection. I have some kind of cheapy components in here. It wants you to have some real expensive um, capacitors on the, uh, on the local oscillator. It wants you to have uh, COG capacitors, which I don't have. So mine drifts a bit. But um, everything else I found at the junk store. I think I may have bought some things. I don't remember now. Um, I had to buy the NE612s. Well, I had to buy the cans. But they tell you how to get all that stuff. I don't remember how much it, it is altogether. It's not a cheap a cheap build either. Um, and like I said, it, it is quite nice. So it's nice to find a kit that is not just super simple and you build it and you go away. This one you can keep coming back to and learn, learn a bunch of things. And uh, if you have uh, a love for test equipment, uh, this is a great thing to, uh, to put on your test equipment and have fun with it.